Whenever you click on an enticing link in a web browser, the website you're looking at knows to send whatever the link contains to your computer and not your neighbor's because your computer sends its IP address, kind of like a return address on an envelope. But as it turns out, IP addresses only get you as far as the modem you have in your house. And these days, most of us have tons of things connected to our routers, especially wirelessly. Phones, laptops, tablets, computers, other people's phones, consoles, Chromecasts. Oh, and they're all connected nearly all the freaking time. You don't really want to be thinking about it. So how does your home networking equipment know to send those questionable videos to you and not your parents sitting in the next room? Well, each device on your network has something called a MAC address. Yes, even the PCs. MAC in this case stands for Media Access Control. It identifies which device is which on your local network. So here's how they work. When data arrives at your home from the World Wide Internet, your router needs to decide which device to send that data to. It does this by keeping track of the MAC addresses of all the devices connected to it, then assigning what's called a private IP address, usually starting with 192.168, to every device. This is also why you usually punch in those numbers to access your router's control panel through your browser. This is very different from a public IP, which is what the rest of the internet sees as being your IP address for your entire home network, and what comes up when you type, what's my IP address, into Google. Your router keeps track of outbound requests, such as when you click on a link. So when the data you want arrives at your router, it attaches the correct private IP address to the data packets, ensuring that they got to your computer or device, since all those private IPs correspond to the correct MAC address. Now this might understandably seem a little redundant, since your computer now has both a private IP and a MAC address that can both individually identify it. But in reality, you need both. Since although both the public and private IPs stay the same throughout this process, the MAC addresses on the data packets are constantly being changed. They only tell the data where to go for its next hop. When your data gets to the next device, the MAC address is changed in order to tell it where to go, well, next. Since your data might go through numerous servers and routers before it finally gets to your device, MAC address information is crucial even though you have a private IP. Another upside of MAC addresses is that normally they always stay the same, with many devices having their MAC addresses hard-coded into the firmware at the factory, making it easy to spot a malfunctioning device on the network if you're trying to troubleshoot. And if you want to protect your network by making it so that only devices that you approve can connect, many routers use MAC addresses to restrict access to known devices. Very useful if you're worried someone might try to steal your Wi-Fi password or even plug in physically. ISPs also use predefined MAC addresses to make it easy to provide you with the service you paid for so that your neighbor isn't the one getting that expensive gigabit connection that you're shelling out money for every month. Of course, they also use these to block access if you aren't paying your bills, however, so type that as you will. It is possible to spoof a MAC address, however, and you might want to if you're concerned about your privacy on a public Wi-Fi connection or you connect a new device to your network that your ISP might not recognize. But be forewarned that this might not make your ISP happy, depending on who they are. Actually, who am I kidding? It probably doesn't depend at all, does it? Racing against the clock as a freelancer? Challenging, whatever you're doing. Yes, I'm sure. But with the growth of the internet, there's never been more opportunities for the self-employed to meet this need. FreshBooks is excited to announce the new version of their all-new cloud accounting software. Do you want to solve all the world's problems, make your entire life better, and be better in bed? Get FreshBooks. The FreshBooks you guys know and love if you're running your own business and need to make transactions and invoices and all that kind of stuff on your own has been redesigned for the way that you work with this new cloud accounting software. It's now simpler and easier than it was before, and it was already simple and easy to get the most important things done quickly. You can still create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds and you can set up online payments with just a couple of clicks to get paid, they say, up to four days faster. You can see when your client has seen your invoice and put the end to the guessing games. 
FreshBooks is offering a 30-day unrestricted free trial to our viewers. To claim it, just go to freshbooks.com slash techquickie and enter techquickie in the how did you hear about us section. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Like it if you liked it, dislike it. If you disliked it, get subscribed. Let us know in the comments down below if there's other things you would like us to check out on TechWiki. Check out Channel Superfun. I haven't been on there in forever. But there is a new, like, Battle Couch video coming at some point that I will be in. So that's pretty cool. And I'll see you next time. I'm going to go play with PlayStation VR for an LTT video, which you'll also see in the future.